And as the daughter of someone who we had to make decisions for at the end of his life, I would argue, as my colleague from District 30 did, that this current form is almost impossible for anybody to understand. Lawyers, doctors, the people who are trying to complete them, the number of variations on the nuances and trying to explain to people what this really means is almost, it's almost impossible. And the vast majority of patients say to their healthcare providers, uh, doc, let me take this home and I'll think about it. And you never see it again. And it doesn't get done. And even if they have some conversations in a casual way with family members, those don't have the power of a law of a document like this one. Colleagues, people deserve the right to self-determination. And creating a new form that puts things in lay language, which is the first principle that we are taught in medicine. The first principle is to explain things in English, not in doctor. And it's hard. But this form that we have now, it's written in lawyer and doctor. It's not written in English for anybody to understand. There is no place on this form for people to write down their values. There's no place for people to articulate why they're making the choices that they're making. On page 3, lines 14 through 15, and page 3, lines 32 through 45, and 4, 1 through 5 of the bill, you'll see that a place for articulating your values has to be included in the new version of the form. Yes, there are all the check boxes, but there's a place to write out in your own language, to be perfectly clear with your own words what you want and why you're making the choices that you did. I hope every single person in this room has an advanced directive, imperfect though it may be. And I also hope that every single person in this room does what my father and our family did a year before his death and what I have done and have on record with my health care providers in addition to my legal advance directive, which is a value statement that explains the choices that we're making. We can't do that now. There's no recommendation for that in the form. People who know enough to know, do it. But otherwise, it's a sterile form without any sense of the real purpose of it. The new version of this form will have to be legislatively approved. I appreciate the points made by the senator from the heart of Crater Lake, the home of Crater Lake, but I would disagree with his conclusion. Just because the committee is called the adoption committee doesn't mean that it will actually have the final approval. The bill makes it perfectly clear that the form will not become the legal instrument until it is adopted by the legislature. We will ultimately have the power to make that decision, to ensure that it truly protects the rights of those most affected. Finally, for those of you who are concerned, I would point to page three of the LC opinion that was provided to us, where it articulates very clearly that it does not allow withholding of food or water for incapacitated individuals and that these options will always be considered comfort care and offered to patients regardless of what their advanced directive says about tube feeding. And further, I would point to the letter, the floor letter that lists all of the supporters of this bill, which include the Catholic health systems in this state, Disability Rights Oregon, and the Alzheimer's Association. Colleagues, if these groups, which are staunch advocates for the lives of people with Alzheimer's and other dementias, staunch advocates for the lives and rights of people with disabilities, staunch advocates for the sanctity of human life as put forward by the Catholic health systems are supporting this bill, I urge you to as well. Allow people the dignity and the clarity to make their own choices at the end of life that healthcare providers and family members can then support. Thank you. Uh, Senator Brown.